This is a video about gluing specimens, gluing bee specimens to pins. Um, in the past, specimens have been either pinned, put on points, sometimes with minutens. Um, this technique allows a specimen to remain undamaged. There's no pin put through it. It allows it to be glued to one side or underneath, minimizing the amount of space that has glue or can't be seen. It keeps the uh, pin and the specimen together so you don't have a large angle of rotation to look at the specimen. In other words, it's faster and provides more visibility. And we'll talk about a rather controversial aspect, which is gluing larger specimens. Okay, there's several things you'll need. One is some kind of pinning platform. We use foam glued to an old signboard in this case, and then we use parchment paper on top of that, parchment paper being very slick not attaching to glue. We use a, a magnetic uh, tool holder, in this case something we bought from a catalog that holds our pins. That's a little bit of rod, threaded rod that holds the pins up above it. We use a reversible tweezers, which you can buy from electronic stores, that clamps onto pins rather than having them do the traditional way of, of holding them with the pin pressure. Um, we use glue. In this case, we use a craft glue. Um, you, there are several different varieties. This happens to be one we use and have on hand. Uh, sometimes we'll put that glue into little quillers bottles. Quillers is a craft technique and allows small amounts of glue to be, come out of the tips of that glue bottle if you want that type of um, fineness for gluing. Okay, so the first part is you dump dried specimens. So these specimens have been drying for several days. They can be wet too, fresh out of the kill jar, onto parchment paper. And the nice thing about parchment paper, it's very slick, so you can easily move them around with damaging. And we're going to spread them out so that there's plenty of room uh, between specimens uh, for gluing. And note we have both large and small specimens. In our lab, we glue large specimens as well as small and have had good success doing that, but most museums, or many museums I should say, uh, would probably frown on larger specimens being uh, glued in that way. Then take a glue bottle and I just run a line of glue down the edge of my thumb and that's going to provide both uh, quickness because it's right near where I'm going to be pinning and it also provides a nice sharp line of glue that uh, gives me easy access um, to uh, where I want the glue on the pin. So I just touch the pin to the uh, glue line and then I'm just going to lay the pin with the glue side down onto specimens. Um, you can do this pretty quickly uh, with this technique and what you want to do is vary the amount of glue on the pin depending on the size of the specimen. So obviously small specimens you want a small amount of glue, large specimens you want a large amount of glue. You can even glue bumblebees, you'll see a picture of that at the end. Um, using this technique when the bumblebees are dried completely. Um, one thing that you want to avoid is uh, having the glue attach only to a leg or only to a wing. Um, that's going to be too light an attachment and ultimately they're going to fall off when they're in the box. And we'll show you how to look for that by flicking your specimens and seeing if they come off at the end. So you want the, the pin to go either underneath between the abdomen and the thorax or and attach to the uh, body itself or you want the pin to go to one side or the other. Um, traditionally I think it would be the right side. I could have that wrong. Um, we, don't, we don't bother with one side or the other. And um, uh, have it glued to the side of the specimen. Again, um, having the glue attaching to the thorax or to the thorax and the abdomen if it's underneath. Okay, there's another way of approaching this. In this case, you take the specimens, lay them out on the parchment paper, and then just fold the parchment paper up so they're actually in a line down the middle. And what you can do here is you do the same gluing technique, but because the glue is relatively strong compared to the weight of the insect, you can pick the insect up and you can move it off to the side. On really small specimens, you can actually put them upright and put them right into a box. But if you're dealing with uh, larger specimens, the weight of the specimen, particularly when the glue is fresh, will pull the specimen down. And we just find it's better to better practice to just do all the gluing all at once and leave them all on their side. But you can move them um, very easily um, just using the fresh glue for short distances and then leave them in nice lines to, to uh, glue up or to dry later for um, putting away. Okay, here's a close-up of the action. Not a lot to it. You're just putting that specimen 
right between the thorax and the uh, abdomen. Okay, afterwards, you have finished specimens. So even bumblebees, here's a, a bombus and patients, I think, that's been glued to a pin, <clears throat> hold up well um, in the pinning technique. Again, you're not destroying any of the structure by doing that. Here's a specimen that's been glued between the thorax and the abdomen at the edge. It's got a lot of attachment points there for the glue, and it's pretty stable. And here's another one. Um, this is going to give you a better um, look than a uh, large pin through a small insect. And a point also has um, a larger area of um, attachment than the pin. So when you're putting them away, particularly you want to be working on foam, you just press the tip of the pin down into the foam and it pops up the edge so that you can grab it pretty handily. And then you can move the specimen either within the tray that you've been gluing or you can put them into a new tray. After everything's been gluing for a day or so, you can actually test your technique or your technician's technique by just going down the row of specimens and flicking the top of them, which is deadly. Actually, you could flick some heads off rather than the glue, because the glue should be stronger than the specimen itself.